Well, we've witnessed yet another rocket explosion this month. NASA recently encountered a serious testing issue with its SLS booster, raising concerns about whether it will even fly in the future. So what exactly went wrong? At the same time, Rocket Lab has successfully completed its latest mission of the year and is now on track to set a new record. Meanwhile, a rather uncertain and potentially bleak future is being predicted for the Ariane 6. Let us explore all of these developments on today's episode of Great SpaceX. It can be said that after years of criticism, the future of NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, is finally becoming clearer in 2025. If the proposed budget cuts are passed, the SLS may be cancelled after Artemis 3. This would mean that both the SLS Block 1B and Block 2 variants may never see flight. However, despite the uncertain outlook, NASA appears unwilling to give up on its flagship rocket. Construction of Mobile Launcher 2 is still ongoing, and most recently, a key component of a future SLS configuration has entered the testing phase. The BOLE booster. BOLE, which stands for Booster Obsolescence and Life Extension, is being developed by Northrop Grumman and is designed as the upgraded solid rocket booster for the SLS Block 2. It is expected to debut no earlier than Artemis 9. This new booster is a critical part of the larger SLS upgrade path, aiming to increase performance and replace the current aging booster components. After completing production, Northrop Grumman and NASA scheduled a full-scale ground test of the Bowl booster on the 26th of June. The test took place at the Northrop Promontory test site in Utah. At exactly 12.25 p.m. Mountain Time, or 2.25 p.m. Eastern, the booster was ignited for what was planned as a 2 minute and 30 second test firing. During this time, approximately 1.4 million pounds of solid propellant was consumed. Initially, the test proceeded smoothly and appeared promising, likely raising expectations at both NASA and Northrop Grumman. However, just over two minutes into the test, about 10 seconds before the scheduled conclusion, an anomaly occurred. The exhaust plume, which had been stable, suddenly flared more intensely. A few moments later, a camera angle switch revealed a large burst and visible debris flying from the rear of the booster. Despite the explosion, the motor continued burning until the scheduled end of the test. Later analysis confirmed that the debris originated from the nozzle section of the booster. After enduring intense heat and pressure for over two minutes, the nozzle may have been pushed beyond its design limits, eventually catching fire and partially breaking apart. The incident was eerily similar to the issue faced by ULA's Vulcan rocket during its second flight, where nozzle-related problems also became a point of failure. In a statement following the test, Jim Kalberer, Vice President for Propulsion Systems at Northrop Grumman, explained, Today's test pushed the boundaries of large solid rocket motor design to meet rigorous performance requirements. While the motor appeared to perform well through the most harsh environments of the test, we observed an anomaly near the end of the two-plus minute burn. As a new design and the largest segmented solid rocket booster ever built, this test provides us with valuable data to iterate our design for future developments. Even though the problem did not result in catastrophic failure, it clearly signaled that significant work remains. The Bull booster, while ambitious in scale and capability, is still a new system. Standing 47.5 meters tall and composed of five segments, it has a diameter of 3.8 meters with a nozzle that reaches 4.4 meters wide. The casing is built from carbon fiber composite material and is projected to produce about 3.9 million pounds of thrust, or roughly 1,770 metric tons. This performance increase would theoretically allow the SLS Block 2 to carry 5 tons more payload than the current Block 1B configuration. However, none of this matters if the system is never approved for flight. Artemis 6 is not expected to launch until the early 2030s, and Artemis 9, the first possible flight to use Bowl, is even further away. That means this booster, even if perfected, might not fly for another decade. The real question is whether the investment in Bull and the broader SLS system is justified, given its uncertain future. Each SLS launch already costs billions of dollars. The development, production, and maintenance of SLS hardware, Orion spacecraft, ground systems like the mobile launcher, and now new booster technology only add to that cost. 
These are massive investments for a program that may not survive beyond Artemis III. The Office of Management and Budget has already proposed significant reductions to Artemis infrastructure. These include cuts to the Lunar Gateway, Orion spacecraft upgrades, and Mobile Launcher 2. While NASA is still pushing forward, these actions suggest that political and financial support is weakening. Unless NASA finds a broader purpose for SLS beyond the Artemis program, many of these developments could ultimately be shelved. Some believe there is still a case for keeping SLS alive. Supporters argue that it remains the only rocket capable of launching the Orion spacecraft, with astronauts on board in a single launch. Others point to its potential use in missions that do not fit SpaceX's Starship architecture. However, these arguments are losing strength as Starship continues to evolve and as NASA becomes more aligned with commercial partners for cost-effective deep space access. The recent bowl test anomaly underscores how far the SLS program still has to go. Even though the test achieved many of its objectives, the nozzle failure shows that the design is not ready for operational use. Over the coming months, engineers at Northrop Grumman and NASA will study the data in detail. They will attempt to identify the root cause and determine whether the design needs a fundamental overhaul or if the problem was an isolated issue. In the meantime, public scrutiny will grow. With every dollar spent, people will ask if NASA is making the right call by continuing to fund a rocket that may never fly again. The fate of the bowl booster and the SLS Block 2 could rest on whether NASA is willing or able to justify these costs in the long run. So what do you think? Will the bowl booster and future versions of SLS ever reach the launch pad? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below by replying yes or no and sharing your reasoning. Then, if you want to keep following the development of NASA, SLS, and the future of space exploration, then make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Let's now turn our attention to Rocket Lab's latest mission and a few developments surrounding the European space industry. At exactly 1.28 p.m. Eastern on the 26th, which was about 5.28 a.m. local time on the 27th in New Zealand, Rocket Lab successfully launched another Electron rocket. The mission lifted off from Pad A at Launch Complex 1, situated at the company's Mahia Peninsula launch site. The goal of this launch was to deliver several payloads into orbit on behalf of Hawkeye 360, a Virginia-based radio frequency data analytics company. Appropriately, the mission was named Get the Hawk out of here. This mission carried four microsatellites tucked within Electron's payload fairing. Three of those satellites were part of Hawkeye 360's growing constellation, and the fourth, known as Kestrel 0A, served as a test platform for future technology developments. The satellites were deployed successfully into a polar low Earth orbit, reaching an altitude of approximately 320 miles or about 520 kilometers. Hawkeye 360 specializes in radio frequency geolocation services. The Cluster 12 satellites launched on this mission are designed to triangulate the sources of radio frequencies across the planet, giving the company greater capacity to deliver signals intelligence from areas of strategic interest. The deployment of these satellites helps close a major coverage gap and strengthens Hawkeye 360's global monitoring capabilities. As for the Kestrel 0A satellite, it'll be used to test new technologies that may eventually be included in future satellite generations. Get the Hawk Out of Here is the second of three dedicated missions that Rocket Lab is flying for Hawkeye 360. The first of these missions, titled Virginia is for Launch Lovers, marked the inaugural electron launch from U.S. soil at Rocket Lab's Launch Complex 2 on Wallops Island, Virginia, in January of 2023. When all three missions are complete, Rocket Lab will have delivered a total of 15 satellites for Hawkeye 360 to low Earth orbit. This latest success also marks a major milestone for Rocket Lab as a launch provider. It was the 67th launch of the Electron rocket overall and the company's ninth launch of the year. What makes this achievement especially noteworthy is the speed with which Rocket Lab is operating. The company started the year without a single launch in January, but has since bounced back with increasing cadence and consistent performance. But the most remarkable part, just hours after the successful completion of Get the Hawk Out of Here, Rocket Lab announced the schedule for its next mission. Titled Symphony in the Stars, this launch was scheduled for just under 48 hours later on the 28th at 6.45 p.m. local or 2.45 a.m. Eastern, also from Launch Complex 1, but this time from Pad B. Rocket Lab proudly declared that this mission would mark the fastest turnaround ever for the Electron rocket from the same site. 
That level of operational speed and efficiency is something few companies in the aerospace sector can claim, especially with rockets that still maintain such a high reliability rate. With only half the year gone, Rocket Lab remains firmly on track to break its previous annual launch record of 14 orbital missions. That goal now seems within reach, and as things stand, Rocket Lab continues to be the second most active launch provider in the world, behind only SpaceX. This momentum shows that Rocket Lab is not only expanding its commercial launch capabilities, but also gaining increasing relevance in the global space market. Finally, let's pivot from New Zealand to Europe and go over the Ariane 6 as well as the challenging road ahead for Ariane space. Despite finally reaching orbit after years of development, the Ariane 6 still faces a difficult path forward. The rocket has completed just two missions so far, and its future schedule remains uncertain. Even though Ariane Space had originally planned for four more launches in 2025, recent delays make that goal seem increasingly unlikely. At a recent panel during the Paris Air Show on the 17th of June, Ariane Space CEO David Caviolis made it clear that the company hopes to dramatically increase its launch rate for Ariane 6. He stated, we need to to go to 10 launches per year for Ariane 6 as soon as possible. It is twice as much for the Ariane 5, so it is a big industrial change. However, the reality tells a different story. Even achieving the four additional missions planned for the rest of 2025 appears doubtful, and the ambition to hit 10 annual launches remains a distant goal. Caviolis himself acknowledged this challenge, stating, First, we have to deliver on 25, and this is a big challenge, so we focus on that. Looking further ahead, Caviolis offered a timeline for when the Ariane 6 might finally reach that launch cadence. He stated, In 29, when we start deploying Iris, which is a milestone program, we will be more than for sure at cadence 10. That means it could take another four years before the Ariane 6 reaches its target launch rate. This delay poses a serious challenge for Europe's independent access to space. Without a fully operational and high-cadence launch system, European nations remain dependent on American rockets for delivering many of their payloads. It is worth noting that the Ariane 6 was selected to conduct more than 18 launch missions for Amazon's Kuiper Internet Constellation. With the current pace, it remains unclear when that contract will be fulfilled. All of this raises significant concerns about Europe's ability to keep up in a rapidly evolving global launch market. While Ariane Space continues to work hard to establish the Ariane 6 as a worthy successor to the Ariane 5, the company faces mounting pressure from both governmental and commercial customers. In summary, while Rocket Lab charges forward with record-setting launch turnarounds and an expanding manifest, Ariane Space is still working to get the Ariane 6 up to speed. The contrast is striking and highlights the challenging dynamics of the commercial launch industry. So let's continue watching these developments closely as we move through the second half of the year. This has been been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.